Hey everybody, how is it going today? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk about the solar stocks. It looks like the entire sector is starting to pick up steam, so I'm going to show you the ones that I like the best. Then I'm going to get into my trading activity for the day and answer one of your questions. Now, before I get started, as always, everybody, please remember, I am not a financial advisor. All of this is just my opinion, and for entertainment purposes only, please make all of your own trading decisions. All right, well, I'm going to lead this off with an article by Pippa Stevens from CNBC. And this article says that uh, 2022 will be a record year for wind and solar per a new report. And the key points of this article say that utility scale solar and wind deployments are on track to hit a new record in 2022, according to a new report from S&P Global Market Intelligence. The firm estimates that 44 gigawatts of solar will come online next year, almost double 2021's projected 23 gigawatts. If the current administration is successful in putting the U.S. on a path to 100% decarbonization of the energy sector by 2035, these record-setting projections are just the beginning. And I agree, you know, if we can get completely on a clean energy by 2035, um, this sector should just grow immensely for the next 15 years. Uh, I'm going to get into the meat of this article. I won't read the whole thing, but it says uh, U.S. solar and wind deployments are on track to hit new record highs in 2022 as momentum behind the energy transition grows, according to a new report by S&P Global Market Intelligence. Um, this next par paragraph just talks about how they are growing from 23 gigawatts to 44 gigawatts. And um, it says, by way of comparison, the U.S. has a total genera generating capability of about 1,200 gigawatts gigawatts according to the Public Power Association. So if we are expected to replace, you know, uh, all or most of these 1200 gigawatts by 2035, this sector should grow massively for the next uh, 15 years. So this might be one of the better sectors to invest in for sure. But um, it says a number of factors are fueling the upswing in wind and solar power generation, including the expansion of state level renewable requirements and expect Ex uh, extension of tax credits for the industry. Um, they, all po they also pointed to a jump in demand from corporations and for companies looking to curb emissions, switching to renewable power is typically one of the first and easiest steps. So if these companies are uh, expected or being a force to switch to more, you know, a, a less, a lesser carbon footprint, this is one of the easier ways to do it by far. And it says, all told, the firm expects wind and solar capacity contracted to non-utility companies to hit 40 gigawatts next year. Energy storage, which is key for intermittent, intermittent, intermittent power sources like wind and solar, is also growing. S&P expects 8 gigawatts of storage to be installed in 2022, which is around six times higher than the prior record from 2020. President Joe Biden has made climate a focus of his administration and called for a carbon-free power sector by 2035. This is part of his wider goal of pushing the country to net zero emissions by 2050. The infrastructure bill passed by the House on Friday evening includes billions of dollars for clean energy project. The larger $1.75 trillion social safety net and climate package, which the House is currently debating, earmarks 555 billion in climate related spending so you can see that there are a bunch of tailwinds behind this industry going forward so this could certainly be one of the better industries uh, to invest in going forward by far all right well one of the things that i like to do when i'm looking for potential swing trades and day trades is go through this um, etf database on my tc2000 charting software and just look for sectors that are making very bullish formations you know that are picking picking up relative strength making nice patterns or breaking out to new highs and um, i like to go through stocks in the in that sector and see if i can find some ones that are looking good for potential trades and uh, one of the ones that i found that were looking the best this week was the Invesco Solar ETF, ticker symbol TAN. And, you know, I read a few articles and that one that I just read off was probably the one that I found the most compelling. And uh, just by the information that I'm going on, 
uh, that I got this week, plus all of these chart patterns. I think this uh, could be a fantastic sector to be investing in, trading in, going forward. But if we look at this ETF and zoom in a little bit, we can see, actually, if we zoom out a little bit, start at the COVID collapse, you can see that big run going all the way up into February of this year. And uh, then it started to roll over like uh, several sectors did. But now we are starting to make a nice rounded bottom. And we have broken through this resistance area, pulled back to it, tested it. Now we are making uh, a big green candle above that eight period exponential moving average. And when you see something like this, the chances for it going on a sustainable uptrend have greatly increased, or at least in my experience they have. So when I see something like this, I look for uh, stocks in that sector to make some potential trades in. And now another ETF that I saw was ICLN, basically the same thing. It is the iShares S&P Global Clean Energy Index Fund ETF. But you can see very similar pattern, big run from the bottom of the COVID collapse all the way into the beginning of the year, kind of rolled over, but now it is making a nice bottoming formation and starting to break above the recent resistance area. So um, I think this these two areas are going to be great to be looking for potential trades or investments going forward. But actually, let's get into some of the individual names that I like the best. All right, so let's get into some of the best looking charts that I see in this sector. And I'm going to be going through these in no particular order, just in the order that I have them uh, written down on my piece of paper over here. But the first one I want to get into is SOL. And this one was actually brought to my attention by Hugo in the Patreon. He was noticing how nice of a rounded bottom formation this one was making. And by the way, uh, obviously I do have a Patreon um, the link is down there in the description if you want to be a part of it and know what we are buying and selling in real time. And that is only $10 a month. And we also do have a chat and I'm in that every single day if you have any questions. Um, but getting back to this chart, you can see uh, SOL definitely making a very nice rounded bottom formation, a little bit of a cup and handle. We got a handle formation going on right here on very light volume. You can see the volume contracting. That is definitely what you want to see. The uh, immediate obstacle right above it is this 200 period simple moving average right around, uh, call it $9.75. But once it gets through that and holds it, I think this one uh, could be off to the races. Definitely a very nice bottoming formation in this chart. Already put in a nice foundation for a potential move higher. So SOL is definitely on the list. Uh, next one is MAXN. MAXN, you can see an even nicer bottoming formation, and it's already uh, fighting with that 200 period simple moving average. It's already above it right now. But if we can get above this pivot, just below $26 a share, I think that's going to be, uh, you know, the first move in the next part of the leg up. So definitely a nice pattern. MAXN. Next one is SPWR, Sun Power Corporation. Let me back it out a little bit. Um, you can see Sun Power, like most of these, went on big runs last year that topped out in uh, early parts of this year, in February of this year, and then have been making these rounded bottom formations. And by the way, if you're in stocks that are doing this, um, you really need to look to start taking some profits off the table because almost every single time um, you're going to be able to buy back in at much lower prices if you are patient and can wait a couple of months or so because this is how these patterns usually shape out. Doesn't mean it's going to be an all-time top. Uh, just once you get a move like this it gets a little exhausted and just needs a little bit of time to you know make a little foundation to start its next run and that's that's what it looks like uh, sun power is starting to do it's already broken above this resistance area right here right around thirty dollars it uh, came down and tested it just a few days ago and now it's starting to move higher so you can see a lot of these stocks are making these nice rounded bottom formations and they have these really light handles you know going into these cup and cup and handle formations and that's exactly what you want to see volume contracting on those handles and you just wait for a break to the new high so spwr definitely on the list next one is beam you can see beam the same thing a little bit weaker than most of them but you know basically the same thing with these uh, solar stocks big run into the beginning parts of this year and now they're trying to carve out a bottom so beam doing the same exact exact thing next one is nova you can see nova is looking really good um, looking kind of like that uh, uh, tan etf you can see 
It's uh, breaking through this resistance area that it made, came down, tested it a couple times, and it's starting to blast off from it. And, you know, when you see stocks that are making these type of formations and are starting to get into these uptrends, especially when the entire sector is doing it, what I like to do is just, you know, take multiple trades on these, you know, go intraday on these, uh, back it out a little bit, and look for these little... Um, you know, bullish triangle, bullish pennant formations, and just take day trades on these over and over again. I mean, here's one right here. When it was making this light pullback, you can just wait for it to break above this resistance area. I can't get my trend line to work very well. There we go. Just uh, break through these resistance areas, and these are just perfect moves for, you know, these usually last for multiple hours to multiple days. So these are just perfect moves for little day trades. I mean, here's one right here. If you were watching it boom a break through that a break through that trend line you got some follow through here is another one if you wanted if you wanted to watch it you know just a break through that trend line and they just happen all over the place all you do is wait for them to kind of top out make a little bit of a you know bullish flag formation and just wait for them to break that trend line you can do them over and over again let's go back to that daily chart um next one is going to be run Sunrun Incorporated. You can see Sunrun is on the brink of breaking through this resistance area right around $60.75. Uh, uh, just a very nice rounded bottom formation as well. You're starting to see a lot of green bars come in to this side, this right side of this rounded bottom formation. And uh, all these things are just on the brink of a resistance area or they're having that little light pullback in those handle formations. So um, I think if we get another strong move in these, the solar sector into next week, these are definitely going to be in play. Next one is Jinko Solar, JKS. You can see same exact thing coming out of this rounded bottom formation, putting pressure on this resistance area just above uh, $62 a share. So another one that is on the brink of breaking out as well. Uh, next one is First Solar, and uh, this one is one of the strongest ones. So if you're looking for longer-term investments, if you want to take advantage of a longer-term trend in a sector, um, what I like to do is buy some of the stronger stocks in that sector and kind of trade around some of the other ones for sympathy play moves. But First Solar, breaking out to a new high already. So you can see there's no obstacles above it for the most part. I mean, this thing is already... Uh, one of the stronger ones in the sector. So first sec uh, first solar is at the top of the list. And last but not least is ENPH. You can see a little bit of the same with ENPH all also breaking out to a new high as well. This one is probably the best looking one out of all of them. Um, breaking out to a new high on strong volume. So ENPH is another one of the leaders in this sector. All right, so let's get into my trading activity for the day. And I only made one trade today, and it was just a small day trade on STRN. This one was a gap up a momentum day trade. And uh, let's actually go to the minute chart, and I'll show you how it all transpired. And, uh, you know, I don't know about you guys, but, man, my portfolio got absolutely murdered today. And, um, you know, I don't usually look at the overall market very often during the, the middle of the day because it doesn't really matter. It only matters what my portfolio is doing. The market can kind of do what it wants, and obviously it did it today. But after looking at my portfolio, I thought the market for sure was rolling over hard. And I look at it, the, uh, the cues and uh, the spider, and they are just, you know, getting stronger as the day is going. But my portfolio is getting weaker. But hey, it is what it is. You can't move up in sync with the market all the time. But getting to this trade, you know, we had the gap up early in the morning, the pull back down to the eight period exponential moving average, and then the move up. And this is what I am looking for. And I want to buy on the high of the 15 day bar or the 15 minute bar. So once it breaks the high of the uh, first 15 minutes of the trading day, that's when I want to get in. This, these are minute candles it's just so we can see it clearer. But usually I have like the five minute candles on my uh, chart as I'm looking at it. And uh, once it breaks that, the high of that third five minute candle, that's my signal to get in. I got stopped in on this candle right here at uh, $5.68. Had a little bit of a move up, then a slight pullback, and then it ran up to a little over $6. I actually put in my sell order at $5.98. It ran up to as high as 
$6.08, so that was a little bit too close for comfort. I, I don't want to try to capture the entire move. I just want to get the meat of it because, you know, if you try to get too cute by uh, capturing too much of it, uh, sometimes or more often than not, it ends up uh, you're turning around on you and your gain turns into a loss. And if we look at STRN, let me back it out to... The rest of the day here you can see it pulled back and it's just kind of been going sideways you know it's up at five dollars 64 cents so it's slightly below what i paid for it so i'd be sitting at a loss if i was still in it but uh you know a decent little trade i made about four and a half percent on it in about you know 20 minutes or so so i will definitely take that and uh, oh and one trade that i didn't get to make was tilray i talked about this one yesterday i was make as i was making my video I put in an order to buy the 1250 call at the end of the day, like the last 15 minutes of the day at six cents. So I was trying, so when it was trading down here, right around 1188, I was trying to buy this 1250 call for six cents that expired today. It came all the way down to the bid at six cents. It was the bid was at six cents. The ask was at seven cents and a few of them fired off at six cents, but it didn't give me any of them. And then the market closed and I was like, well, Oh, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. But then today, Tilray gaps up. And, you know, in the first 20 minutes of the trading day, I think they made it to a high of like 63 cents. So if I could have got them at six cents, I would have made uh, more than 10 times my money if I could have got out at that exact high, you know, or close to it. Um, I never expect to get out near the high. But, man, it just, just shows you... Um, if you play these options right at the end of the week on Wednesday and Thursday and uh, you get a move up on Friday, these things can pay off really big. Unfortunately, I did not get any of this one. Uh, you know, when, when the day closed and I didn't get any, I thought maybe it was a blessing in disguise. It wasn't going to have a move, but that was uh, that was not the case, unfortunately. And right now, it's, uh, man, look, I think it pulled back after that. But it looks like it's starting to get stronger into the close yeah because it had that big gap up and normally when you know i buy those options and you get a big move up on friday i'll get out in the first you know 15 minutes to a half hour every single time because you know you run out of time so fast on friday so i definitely would have probably got out around i don't know 45 maybe 55 cents on those um <laughs> But the, they came all the way down super fast, but it looks like they are running into the close. So right now those options are probably worth about 40 cents or so. So, I mean, still would have been a decent gain if I was still holding on to them right now. But unfortunately, uh, could have, should have, would have, but I probably should have paid uh, seven cents. You know, whoever was on the ask offering them for seven cents, I probably should have just paid up for that extra penny on each one of those contracts. And oh, well, it didn't happen, but... Uh, that's how it can tend to work out if uh, you know you play these options right you can make it big if you uh, you know you, you you buy them correctly and if you buy them when they're making these type of patterns right here um, there's a little bit more of a chance that you're going to get that move up you know into the next day and if it, this happens on a Wednesday or a Thursday and you happen to get that pop up on Friday they can pay off super big but anyway let's uh, jump on to that question this question was from hard hitting Robert Witten my friend Robert Witten and he was asking about Zoomedica and uh, I check in in on Zoomedica about uh, once a week or so to see how it's doing Zoomedica of course had this massive run uh, earlier in the year but it's just since been fading into the abyss but now it looks like it's trying to carve out a bottom um, i wouldn't say it's there just yet i would like to see um you know a break above this area right around probably 65 cents or so and a hold before i got interested in it but it is carving out a bottom you know making a nice consolidation and this is the first level of it this is definitely what you want to see you want to see those big green volume spikes that tells you it's under uh, accumulation so this tells me that zoomedica is continuing to be accumulated accumulated and all you need is some price action to the upside and a little bit of follow through and i think zoomedica is uh, going to have a good possibility of starting another uptrend now i would in a perfect scenario scenario in my book i would like to see zoomedica go sideways for another four or five months or so and then start to break out i think that'll be enough of a base for uh, zoomedica or at least enough of a base for zoomedica you know to go on a decent uptrend but that's what i'm looking for on zoomedica continue to check on this thing uh, at least once a week i was watching this thing a lot when it was having these uh, you know this big move up early in the year but i think zoomedica do ha does have a lot of potential 
just waiting for that uh, consolidation to finish and then you know a move to the upside and robert also asked about metx and robert um i don't know if i talked about this on youtube or just in the patreon group but i know i've talked about this one before a couple of the patreons are high on this stock and uh, what i am looking for on this stock i'm watching this on a daily basis i want to see a break above 75 cents i think the way this pattern is looking with all this volume that's being poured into the stock i think if we get a break above 75 cents this is going to be a fantastic long trade i thought we were going to get it a couple of days ago but it, it broke down just a little bit but that's okay as long as it continues to hold between say 50 cents and 70 cents continues to uh, consolidate um, if we get a break above 75 cents i'm going to be very interested in taking a position on medex Okay, everyone, that is all I have for this video, so I'm going to end it right there. But if you have any questions or comments on any of these stocks, or if you have any other ones you want me to take a look at, please leave it down there in the comment section. I will get to them as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching my video all the way to the end. And until next time, take care, everybody.